Hey everyone, Kyo here. So over the years I have reviewed many pen displays and in this video I'm going to tell you 9 things you absolutely should know before you buy one. The first thing you should know is a pen display is not a tablet even if it looks very thin. A pen display is actually a monitor that you can draw on and since it's a monitor you will have to connect this to a computer in order to draw on it. You can connect this to a laptop or a desktop or to a Mac. A tablet is a portable computing device with a touch screen, built-in battery, and an operating system. So this can be used as a standalone. This does not need to be connected to anything. But a pen display has to be connected with a cable to a computer. And sometimes you may even need to use two cables because one is a video cable and the other cable is for power. In this case, I have connected this pen display to my laptop with USB-C to USB-C and this USB-C port is able to provide enough power to power the pen display. But if this port cannot provide enough power, I will have to connect additional power to this pen display. Second thing to know is pen displays can be used to take notes and the note taking performance is going to be better than pen tablets those tablets without screens. The third thing to know would be features to look for when buying a pen display. Look for pen displays that have laminated displays, which means there is no gap between the glass and the LCD beneath. So when you're drawing, there will be no gap between the line and your pen tip. The next feature to look for is a matte textured display which has anti-glare and also provides a nice textured surface for you to draw on. The matte textured surface can be from matte screen protectors or from matte glass. Matte screen protectors may develop scratches with time with usage but matte screen protectors can be replaced but the replacement is not easy because you will have to prevent air bubbles from forming when you're applying a new one over your pen display. Matte glass is resistant to scratches, but pen displays with matte glass or edge glass surface are more expensive. The fourth thing to know is Mac OS does not work well with 16 inch pen displays with 1440p resolution and 24 inch pen displays with 4K resolution. Let's look at this pen display for example. This is a 16 inch pen display with 2560 by 1600 resolution. So the resolution is 1440p plus. And if you use this pen display without any scaling, if you use this pen display at its native resolution, UI elements such as the text, the icons, the palettes, they can look quite small. So in this case, you may want to scale the UI elements up to make them larger and easier to see. However, some scaling options here may result in fuzzy visuals. For example, let's take a look at this option. If you look closely, you can see the visuals are slightly fuzzy. So you have to go with high DPI options. Let's go with this 1280 by 800. And now you can see the visuals are much sharper, noticeably sharper. So now the UI elements are bigger and sharper. So even this box is bigger. The icons, the text, the palettes by the side are all bigger. And the canvas space is reduced in size to have everything look bigger. Now you may want to choose a scaling that's somewhere in between native and this bigger UI scaling, for example this one that I showed you earlier, but this will have fuzzy visuals like fuzzy text, fuzzy icons, so that's the compromise you have to work with if you are thinking of getting a pen display that is 16 inches with 1440p resolution with Mac OS. For Mac users, I will probably recommend you go with 1080p resolution for pen displays that are between 10 inches to 20 inches. And if you want to have a huge pen display like a 24 inch pen display, go with the 1440p resolution. Windows users will not have any issues with scaling so you can get any size and 
any resolution you want. The fifth thing to know is if you have intention to use the pen display in a dual display setup, make sure the switch display functionality works. So switch display basically allows you to move the cursor from one screen to the other. So now my cursor is on the other screen and when I press the shortcut button, which I have assigned to the pen side button, the cursor will switch back to the pen display. If switch display does not work, you will not be able to move the cursor around both displays that easily. So before you buy any pen displays, make sure to do some research to see whether or not switch display will work. And for all my reviews of pen displays, I will always test for switch display. The next thing to know is not all pen displays will come with a stand and USB-C cable, even if the pen display supports USB-C to USB-C connection. So pen displays usually will come with the HDMI and USB-A cable, but the USB-C cable may be optional. So if your pen display does not come with a stand, you have to buy your own stand because otherwise you will have to draw with the pen display like this on the table and it's not very comfortable for drawing for long periods of time. So if you need to buy a stand, the one that I recommend is the Pablo PR100 which is adjustable at many different angles. This is a good one that you can also use with a laptop. And if you want to buy a USB-C cable, make sure the USB-C cable can transmit video and take a look at the USB-C port on the pen display. If the port is flushed on the surface like this, you can get any USB-C video cable. If the port is actually recessed inside into the pen display, you will have to get a USB-C cable with a very small connector here so that you can fit inside that recessed area. If you are not sure whether the USB-C cable you want to buy can work with your pen display, I recommend you just buy the USB-C video cable from the company instead, which will be slightly more expensive compared to those cables you can find on Amazon. Am I at 0.7 now? Anyway, I want to talk about color support. If possible, get a pen display with 100% sRGB color support. And if your budget allows, get a pen display with 100% Adobe RGB color support. 100% Adobe RGB will give you a wider color gamut compared to 100% sRGB. But 100% sRGB should be sufficient for most digital art creators. And just having 100% Adobe RGB or 100% sRGB does not mean the display is color accurate. You will have to color calibrate the display in order to make the colors look accurate. And if you want to match the pen display's colors with your other display's color, you will have to color calibrate both displays. Based on my experience of having reviewed so many pen displays over the years, I can say that the colors on most pen displays do look alright out of the box, so color calibration may not be that necessary. And color calibrators are quite expensive. The next thing I want to talk about is Android support. If you have intention to use your pen display with an Android device like an Android phone or tablet, make sure the Android device can output video signal. And it would be good if the Android device has some desktop mode when it's connected to an external display. For example, with the Samsung tablet that I have here, it has Samsung DeX, which is the desktop mode. So this is able to give you a desktop-like user interface. If you use an Android device that does not have desktop mode, but still can output video signal, it's likely that you are going to have this vertical UI that is just a mirror of your Android phone or Android tablet. There is no driver with Android, so you will not be able to customize the pressure sensitivity of the pen, customize the shortcuts on the pen, and also the hotkeys on the pen display. There is no touch screen, so when you are drawing, 
or when you're using apps that require touch gestures you will not be able to zoom in and out pan and rotate and it's quite inconvenient to use those apps that are designed for finger gestures without a touch screen and in this case if i am actually drawing and if i have to go back to the desktop i will have to swipe up from the bottom so that i can get back to the desktop if you really want to draw with android apps on a pen display i would recommend you use clip studio paint because clip studio paint supports keyboard shortcuts so you can use your keyboard for shortcuts and use your pen to draw but if you use other apps that are designed for finger gestures uh, i would say it's quite inconvenient to use those apps to the point of frustration all right the last thing you should know about pen displays before you buy them is to do more research online check out more reviews online i have reviewed many pen tablets and pen displays over the years on my blog and also on this youtube channel for my tax reviews i usually have a list of pros and cons so if you want to compare different products you can compare the list of pros and cons very easily and very quickly you can find my text and video reviews using the links in the video description below and if you have the intention to buy any products consider using the affiliate links in those reviews because i do earn some commission for each sale but at no extra cost to you so using those affiliate links really helps support the work that i do here and also on my blog all right i hope this video is useful thanks for watching and if you have any questions regarding pen displays or pen tablets let me know in the comment section below see you guys in the next video bye